I'm feeling so elated right now. After 50 years, and he's finally free. You know, words can't even explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm really, really grateful. Thanks to Jamaica Stand Up Group, Mr. Buchanan and his team. He did a very great job in such a short time. And I hope for the rest of inmates that is in there incarcerated just the same time like Mr. George Williams. I hope justice will be served in the short space of time that justice has been served to my uncle, George Williams. Amen! What's Amen! Name? My name is Pamela Green, George Williams' niece. Amen! Okay, right, so this is certainly what I like to call swift justice. And so I'm very happy. Stand up for Jamaica, Miss, Miss, Miss Galato. If you, I know we're observing social distances, but Miss Galata is no, one. No, I don't want to say <laughs> she, She's the one who certainly had reached out to me and we, we assessed it and I went to see George. So to know that all of this happened in, in seven days, certainly in a, in a perfect society, you, you could appreciate that this is what we want for our justice system. And so I would just implore all and plead to all defense attorneys that there are many of our brothers and sisters still in there and we need to be able to assist them like we did for George. A very pleasant good morning ladies and gentlemen. It's a rainy Thursday morning and I'm en route to Linstead. You see it was yesterday in the Jamaica Observer. I read an article that brought tears to my eyes and I cannot believe that George Williams, after spending 50 years in prison without being charged with a crime, is still suffering. We have to big up Candy's art for this article. And um, when I read the article, it says that George William is living in a squalid state. When I look at the photograph of Mr. Williams, I could see stress, I could see depression, I could see everything that is bad happening for this now 74 year old man. I started to cry because I'm like that, you know, I'm a humanitarian and I believe in helping my fellow Jamaicans in any which way I can. As you know, I'm suffering from an heart condition that was diagnosed on the 26th of June of this year. The lower left ventricle in my heart is narrowed and I have difficulty breathing from time to time. But I put my problems aside because I know that sometimes when you think you have a severe problem, there are people who are in a worse situation than you. I reached out to a friend of mine by the name of Adela Grinia, and I told Adela of the situation of George Williams. And she said, Big Stone, we have to do something about it. I said to myself, I have some care packages here as well. And I also have three brand new shirts that was given to me as a gift. And I said, I'm going to impart that to Mr. Williams. Now, when I look at the situation of what happened to Noel Chambers, you must remember Noel, the 81 year old man that spent over 40 years in prison not being charged with a crime he was reduced to skin and bones and rats and roaches was eaten on his body i said to myself we have to make the conditions a little better for george william so i reach out to sean prendigas from the rudolph prendigas foundation Sean was brought to tears as well. And I also reach out to Siddiqui Williams, the president for Real Helping Hands crowdfunding. And they put something together and we say, okay, I'm gonna go over there and make this cash presentation and also purchase some food for George Williams. So I know that life will even be a little better. Now I will be meeting with Pamela, his caretaker, and niece, who has been taking care of George for 
a little over a year since he was released from prison. And uh, I intend to encourage her to join Real Helping Hands crowdfunding to see if the rest of the world can lend forth their hands and help a brother who's in dire need. I contacted my photographer, Prince, and I said, Prince, I want you to come along with me on this journey so that we can capture this moment and the rest of the world can see exactly how George has been living, the conditions that he's in now, and what we intend to do to make his life a whole lot better. The journey continues as we travel on to Linstead to meet with George Williams, a man who needs our help. Stay tuned to this channel. When we come back, we're gonna be meeting with Pamela, we're gonna go shopping, and then we're gonna meet the man of the moment, Mr. George. Um, a very pleasant good morning ladies and gentlemen here we Perfect. are in Ivy District with the smaller brother of George Williams his name is Alwyn Jones. Jones now today I'm in a bittersweet mood because 50 years being locked up behind bars 50 years when your childhood is taken from you robbed by the system having not been charged with a crime, suspected of committing a crime, but not been charged with a crime. It bleeds my heart. So when I read the story of the observer, the Jamaica observer, Candice Orton, and I read how she articulate the story, it brought me to tears. When I look at some of the photographs captured of how depressed and how desolate Mr. Williams looked. I said to myself, Big Stone, you're suffering from a heart condition, but your problem is not even as grave as Mr. Williams' problem. What can you do to help this man, to bring him back to a sense of dignity, to give him back his pride because he's a human being and that has been robbed from him. So the man of the moment, my brother, yeah. How are you? Yeah, I love you so much, man. Yes, sir. I see. I read your story yeah. and I said I have to come and look for you. Yes, sir. Because I know 50 years being taken away from you. Yes, sir. They should have given you millions of dollars so that you can live in a nice, beautiful home. Yes, sir. And relax with a swimming pool. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, so we brought gifts for you today yes, sir. and we brought some cash for you yes, sir. so that you can live a little bit better and we're gonna pledge our support to open up an avenue that people from all over the world will know of your story and they will reach out to help you yes, so as of today you no longer have to worry about Anything. anything you have millions of people out here mr williams yes, that read your story understand how you suffered for all these 50 years yes, and they're willing to help you yes, okay yes. i have to big up the reporter again candice Arden, this beautiful young lady yes. who did the best that she could ever do who, who, who selflessly could just to come here just to really come here and to drive in this desolate part of 
of Ivy District. You know, it touches my heart. So I'm going to meet with Pamela. Pamela, that's you? Yes. How are you? Come over here. Touch me, George. Touch me. You are Rasta, my George. Yes, my from ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Touch me, George. Look at the camera. Pam, how are you? Can I get a hug? <laughs> I love you so much. I, I, I read a the story from Candice, yeah. a beautiful young lady from the Observer newspaper, and I yeah. call my friend Jason Cross because we have done a number of humanitarian work right across this country. Yeah. We have looked out for people who cannot look out for themselves. Yeah. And even though I'm sick right now, yeah, but I me. said I have to come here and to pay my respect to a hero because he's, George he's is a hero. A hero. George Williams. <laughs> George Williams is a hero. Yes, he is. You know, a hero. Trust me. Yeah. We brought some gifts yeah. and some cash for you. Okay. And we're going to make some connection with some people overseas. Yes. And, I have uh, a lady too. She wants to talk to you also okay she meet she talked to me on instagram right so she she wanted some info so i i, I sent her a message yes so we connected this morning yes so i told her you will be here yes so she said no problem because she said she worked also in the prison institution so wow. she know what it is like okay yeah. all right there we have some people in the united states of yeah. america yeah. Uh, there's a crowdfunding by the name of Real Helping Us. Okay. Okay. And you also have the Rudolph Prendigas Foundation. Okay. And these people have sent some cash. Yeah. And um, we also wanted to get some food. Yeah. So that at least George can, because it's raining yeah. and so on. And he eats a lot. <laughs> and he, you eat a lot, George. Yes, <laughs> All right. Well, we have some stuff in the car. Let yeah. me go get them, George. Yeah. I know this token of our appreciation and love for you cannot buy back your 50 years that they took from you. But I would only hope that for a few days into a few weeks, it can ease your mind just a little bit. And to let the world know that even though they don't want to respect you and pay you any mind, but they must know that they have human beings still left here in Jamaica. And there's still human beings all over the world that still love you, respect you, and honor you. So on behalf of myself, on behalf of Adela, on behalf of Sean Prendigas from the Rudolph Prendigas Foundation, and also on behalf of my friend Sadiq Williams from Real Elpinas, I want to make a cash presentation to you of 40,000 Jamaican dollars okay and I hope that there'll be many more funding coming in I hope there are many more funding coming in for you and I pledge my support that I will not just let it stop here you understand I will always remember you George there was another man by the name of Noel Chambers Noel Chambers was 81 years old. Can you imagine 81 years old and he spent 40 years in prison being dumped, being forgotten by some people who don't give a damn, who don't even care. But I care because this is my brother right here. This is a human being right here. And I will never ever give up on my own people because this man deserves his dignity. He deserves his sanity and he's deserved to live just like anybody else. So thank you guys, please reach out. We're gonna set up a crowdfunding with real helping us. I'm gonna call Siddiqui right now as soon as I get off the phone, don't worry, man. I love you. And I know all my friends out there love you too. I don't care, this love you and the Observer love you and Jason Cross and everybody else love you. I will promise you that your suffering will never ever go unnoticed and you will be remembered. You understand? While you're alive, we don't want to come to your funeral and say, oh, George this and George that. We want to do what we can for you. 
while he's still alive. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? So I love you, George. I love you from my heart, man. I want you to know that we'll never ever forget you, no matter what. You hear me? Yes, yeah. All right. Thank you Ladies. very much. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, thank you, you very yes, much. Yes. Thank you very, very Not much. Not a problem. I love you too, Pam. Thank you. Um, I'm very emotional when it comes to stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, but I can't help it because when we see injustice, and remember Martin Luther King says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We must come together. I know we're in a pandemic in Jamaica. I know things are not right with our people, but we must come together and share the little bit that we are with each other. Because guess what, at the end of the day, the only thing we have is each other. And if we can just share a little bit and care a little bit, just like how Sean Prendergast from the Rural Prendergast Foundation share, just like how Sadiq Williams from Real Helping and share, just like how Pamela Green look out for her uncle, and Alwyn, his brother, and Candice Harton from The Observer, they poured their soul out. It was a rough, rugged road coming here today, but I didn't mind because I had to place my eyes on a human being, my brother. So thank you for accommodating us. Yes, sir. And we love you. You want to say anything to your friends out there? Just look in the camera and say, what do you want to say, George? Over my limb, in my yard, I woke up out early morning, walk out the trail of some government work, achieve, what do you think? I know what they want to give me. Well, guess what? I promise you yes, that whatever the show be due to you, I'm going to make sure that we give it to you in life yeah. so that you can do what you want and relax what you want. You was only 20 something years old, a young man. Eight. You was 21 years old when you went to prison. Can you imagine over 50 years taken from this man? 53 years. 53 years taken from him. That cannot be great. No money. It doesn't matter. I don't care if they give him a billion dollar. That cannot replace his childhood. That was robbed from him. I say shame on you, whoever you are. And I know that George Williams is not the only one. There are many more people in prison, as we speak, that is forgotten. Find these people, the government, and make sure you bring them home to their family. They have suffered enough, long and hard. Bring them home to their family so that they can spend the rest of their life with dignity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, George. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a humanitarian, I'm a motivational speaker, and I'm also a philanthropist. I believe in being that voice for the voiceless. Being there for someone who barely can help themselves. Being there for someone who cannot speak. Because I don't like injustice. And when I read the story in the Jamaica Observer newspaper with Candice Harton, and how she articulated the story, 50 years pass and to see that one year and a little bit over a year George has still not been given any form of dignity I had to reach out so I call up my friends because I have a lot of friends all over the world that I've called on when I don't have it from time to time so I reach out to Sean Prendergast from the Rudolph Prendergast Foundation I say Sean George Williams need help and George is a, a role model because he doesn't show any bitterness. He's not angry with anyone. All he deserves is to have his respect. Then I reach out to Sadiq Williams from Real Helping Hands and everybody said they wanted to be a part of this. My friend Adela, all the way in England, said she wanted to be, go Big Stone. I know you're not feeling well, but go, go, go and do it. Reach out, bring something, get some food for him or something. So I only hope that Pamela, his caretaker, will use some of the money to get some food and whatever, and then we'll be forever making sure that Real Helping Hands crowdfund me with set up a crowdfunding where people can now pledge his support. It will go directly to 
the families of George Williams and help to take care of him and to let him relax in dignity. So we big up the Observer newspaper, okay, and Candice Artner, a great journalist. We big her up for this beautiful story because it touched my heart at five o'clock in the morning and I know it will touch your heart. Reach out and share with this brother. Help him that the next 50 years, because I know you're going to live for a long time, right, George? Yes, 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 yes. Rastafari, aye. Rastafari. I don't want to, since you're Rastafarian, I, yeah, I want to take off okay, right. this button of his Imperial Majesty. Wow. And I want to put it on you, because I think you deserve to wear it. Wow. 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 You're so a true nice. Rastafarian. All right? You're true Rastafarian. So you have your button of his Imperial Majesty. Your guidance in your and guess what? You have to have the other one. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna strip myself. <laughs> oh my God! I'm gonna give you the other button of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. <laughs> yeah. So we go hand in hand. His Imperial Majesty and Marcus Garvey. Come to the star, yeah. I'm telling you. So you have both of them on your chest. I want you to pose for this picture. Yeah, yeah. Marcus Garvey and His Imperial Majesty. On the chest. Marcus Garvey and his Imperial Majesty on the chest of yes. one of our hero, George William. Yes. Help him, please. Yes. Look out for his crowdfunding and pledge your support. Yes. He needs it at the start. I um Pam and they are for Big Stone Records. And they are for the Rudolph Prendigas Foundation. And on behalf of Real Elkina. I want to present these care packages to you. Some clothing in one. No. And, and, and that is it. Thank you very much. For him. Yeah, thank you very much for reaching okay. out to Mr. Williams. At least you know someone cares. Mm -hmm. And someone can consider what he's going through. Okay. And his niece, Pamela. Wow. Wow. Uh, George, just say thank you, Sadiki. Tell him thank you, George. Thank you, Sadiki. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We continue to do what he can do. I, I'm gonna let you talk to his caretaker, Pamela. Come over here, Pam. Pam, um, this is the president and founder for Real Helping Hands. It's a crowdfunding that covers the Caribbean but has now uh, blossomed into the entire world. So people from right around the four corners of the earth yeah. will see this and they will support towards George Williams' story. Say hello to Siddiqui. Hi Siddiqui, good afternoon, how are you? I'm Pamela Green, George Williams' niece. Hi Pamela. Yes, yes, we tried to do our best and I want to tell you thanks for reaching out, thanks for the help, thanks for whatever you can do and continue to do and hope your foundation grow from strength to strength. So just bless up yourself and no love and thanks again. Yeah. All right, Sadiqi, can you have the... So can you come and look on a young woman and tell me to do the very funny scene? Yeah, <laughs> 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 Yeah, that thing said everything is gonna be okay. Yeah. The Sean Prendigas from the Rudolph Prendigas Foundation. Okay? Sean Prendigas. Sean Prendigas.